In the last couple of years, I have produced what I call the Dead Mall series, 32 short films and counting about dead malls. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with what a dead mall is, it's basically a shopping mall that has fallen into hard times. So it's either has few shops and fewer shoppers, or it's abandoned and crumbling into ruin. No sale at pennies. <laughs> I started producing this series uh, in early 2015. After going through kind of a dark period in my life where I just didn't want to create films anymore. I put my camera away and I just stopped. So in, in, uh, in 2015, I decided to make a short film about the Owings Mills Mall. Owings Mills Mall opened in 1986. I should know because I was there on opening day. Uh, I was there with my family, along with every other family in Baltimore, and you had to drive around for 45 minutes just to find a parking spot. So if you can imagine, <laughs> that's not happening at the malls today. My first mall job that I had as a teenager was at a sporting goods store called Herman's World of Sports. Maybe you remember, Herman's World of Sports. Do you, you guys remember that? <laughs> yeah. So I, I worked in a ladies' shoe store. Uh, I worked in a leather goods store. And I also worked in a um, video store. And not being one who was very fond of the retail arts, I got fired from every single job. <laughs> In between these low-paying retail jobs, I did what any normal teenager did in the 1990s. I shoplifted. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hung out with my friends at the mall. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh my god, what kind of talk is this? Hanging out at the mall could be fun, but it could be really lame, too. Like, sharing a cigarette with a 40-year-old unemployed mall rat who's put on red or black lipstick for the night while you're on your break from your crappy minimum wage job. <laughs> As I stand here today, Owings Mills has been gutted, and it's ready for the wrecking ball. The last time I was there, I was, it was in the evening, and it was about three days before they closed the mall for good. And you kind of felt, they never announced the mall was closing, but you had this sort of feeling, this ominous feeling that something was, big was going to happen, like it was the end of the road. Um, it was a very creepy walk through the mall. Let me show you. So when I started producing the demo series, I put the videos up onto YouTube, and while I thought they were interesting, I didn't think others would, sh frankly, I didn't think others would share the enthusiasm for such a drab and depressing topic. <laughs> but apparently I was wrong because a lot of people started to comment. And at first the comments were like, uh, basically like, oh my God, that's the mall from my childhood. What happened? And then I would get comments from people who were like, there's a dead mall in my town, you should come and film it. So I started to travel around the mid-Atlantic region, filming these dead malls. Some were open, some were abandoned. It was kind of always hard to get into the ones that were abandoned, but I somehow always found a way in. Um, <laughs> the malls that are still open, they always do this weird thing, like the dead malls. You know, they'll have three stores left, but they try to spruce it up to make it appear like things are on the up and up. For example, you'll have an empty store 
and they bring the gate down. So at Owings Mills, for example, they put this tarp over the gate, right? And it's got, it's got a, a stock photo of a woman who's so happy, and she's holding a blouse, and she's like... <laughs> and then there's a guy standing next to her with, like, an espresso cup, and he's like... <laughs> and, and it says, what brings you today? I wanted to be scared and depressed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the comments just started, kept pouring in on the videos, and from all over the country, and then all over the world. And I started to think this could really be something, but I had to get creative, because I'm like, how long are people going to sit and watch me waddling through an empty mall? <laughs> So I started, you know, the original episodes I filmed with an iPhone. So I'd walk through the mall with an iPhone and, you know, <laughs> like that. <laughs> and security, because malls, they don't, they don't like photography, so the security would come up and be like, put that away. And I'm like, okay. So I had to get creative and sneaky. So I started using a hidden camera and different techniques to get the footage that I needed. And basically what I wanted to do was make the video like it was a first-person experience. So, like, you are sitting, put your headphones on, watching the screen. It's like you're there in the video, like a video game, basically. I also started to use music, collaborating with artists who create music called Vaporwave. And Vaporwave is a music genre that emerged in the early 2010s among internet communities. Here's an example. by an artist named Disconscious, and from an album he did called Hologram Plaza. So if you look that up, you can hear more of those tunes. Um, Vaporwave is more than an art form, it's like a movement. It's nihilistic, it's angsty, but it's somehow comforting. Uh, the whole aesthetic is a way of dealing with things you can't do anything about, like no jobs, or sitting in your parents' basement eating ramen noodles, uh, Vaporwave came out of this generation's desire to express their hopelessness, the same way that the pre-internet generation did sitting around in the food court. One of my favorite malls I've been to is in Corpus Christi, and it's called the Sunrise Mall. When I was a kid, my favorite thing to do was watch movies, and I used to watch movies over and over and over again. And one of my favorite films was The Legend of Billie Jean. Now, for those of you who've seen The Legend of Billie Jean, you'll know that uh, <laughs> it's a great film. I love it. And it's Helen Slater and Christian Slater, and if you didn't know, they are not related. Many people thought that they were brother and sister. They're not. But anyway, Sunrise Mall was used in the film. It was used as a filming location. The mall is exactly the same as it was in 1984. We're talking 32 years later. Let me show you. And here's Billie Jean running across the fountain, being chased by Hubie Pyatt's friends. And she jumps over here. And you can see this shot right here is what it looks like today. It's pretty incredible. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's exactly the same. <laughs> And there they are falling in the fountain, and she runs up the stairs. There's a nice shot of the, the whole thing here. I love that so much. <laughs> I just think, I, I always think in my head, I'm like, if I owned a mall, like a dead mall, like, why don't they embrace their vintage look? Like, put in a bar, like, put vegan food in the, in the uh, 
in the food court and invite like millennials and hipsters <laughs> to come and drink and eat. And I guarantee you, within like three weeks, H and M and Levi's will be banging on the door trying to get space. I don't know why they don't do this, but apparently, it's only in my the mind it goes all day. <laughs> Anyway, in closing, <laughs> when they first asked me to do this talk, I said, "Do you have the right person?" <laughs> uh, these talks are supposed to be kind of like inspiring, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I remembered something though. I, I said, "You know, I." I I put my camera down three or four years ago, and it took going to these malls for me to be inspired again, and to see my audience and people from all over the world writing me and saying, "God, I love your videos," is incredible. I don't know how to even explain it as an artist how fulfilling that is. If you would have told me a year ago. That I would be standing on this stage, talking to all of you wonderful people, I would have never believed it. I am humbled, and so appreciative. Thank you very much.